بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب الشرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل لقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی So as we have discussed about the uh, skeleton of the chest wall that is the ribs, the vertebras and joints of the uh, chest wall the joints of the ribs with the sternum and with the vertebra and, uh, and then uh, now we are able to discuss about the respiratory movements before uh, we start the respiratory movements the uh, axis of movement in the previous slide i want to show you that here is the axis of movement that passes through the costo transverse joint and costo vertebral joint is a tubercle joint with the uh, transfer process of the vertebra and the tubercle of the rib and here is the uh, joint between the head of the rib and the uh, facet over the vertebra and here is the axis which is pass around this axis the movement two movements they are offering one is here that will increase the transverse diameter and here is the a movement from anteroposterior which will increase the anteroposterior diameter so movement of the thoracic wall and diaphragm during the inspiration produce increase in intrathoracic volume and diameter of the thorax so if you have tried uh, at any time that you have inflated the balloon with Uh, although you are uh, inflating it with the positive air pressure from your chest cavity into the balloon but balloon expand in all the directions until and unless it is limited to expand in some direction otherwise expand in all direction so it means that all the direction that anteroposterior transverse vertical all the diameters the lung will expand and this will occur due to the intra uh, this will cause the difference in the intra intrathoracic volume means the volume of the air in the lungs the pressure changes that result in the air being alternately drawn into the lungs during inspiration Uh, through the nose mouth and larynx and trachea and the uh, these pressure changes they throw the lung uh, air out of the lungs by the process of expiration through the same passages during the passive expiration diaphragm intercostal muscle and other muscle relaxes causing intrathoracic volume and increasing the Uh, decreasing the intrathoracic volume and increasing the intrathoracic pressure so what this sentence mean is that in inspiration is an active process during which the action of diaphragm intercostal muscles contraction of these muscles causes increase in intrathoracic volume through in decreasing the intrathoracic pressure but during expiration it is a simple relaxation of diaphragm intercostal muscles and other muscles that will cause the expiration intra abdominal pressure decreases and abdominal viscera are decompressed this allows stretched elastic tissue of lung to require and expelling most of the air out okay now before we go to the movements of the chest wall and that occurs and causing the changes in the diameters i think so we should we should have an idea why what actually causes the movement of the air into the lungs and out of the lungs first of all keep it in mind that lungs is a is a elast uh, require has a tendency to require 
to, uh, to become smaller and it's an elastic tissue and uh, it is kept, it has to be kept open. The alveoli, they tend to collapse due to the elastic requality of the lungs but they are kept open by the thoracic wall and pressure in the thoracic wall. So how is it is done? First of all, see here that actually the uh, benefit of rib cage muscles action of rib cage expand as is rib, rib muscles contract. Rib muscles when they contract, they causes the expansion of the chest wall in both direct in all the direction anteroposterior transverse as well as in the vertical direction the contraction of diaphragm it moves down and it will increase in the vertical increase in the vertical diameter so what happens then when this increases it causes the expansion of the lung and during acceleration, there is simply relaxation of the muscles of the chest wall, the rib muscles and the diaphragm muscle relaxes causing the exhalation. Now, what happens? The pressure outside is 760 millimeter of mercury. But here is a cavity which is between the brighter pleura and visceral pleura. Here you see the pressure is 756 millimeter of mercury. So the difference is of 4 millimeter of mercury. The normal difference. Intrapulmonary pressure means pressure within the trachea, bronchi, bronchiole and alveoli is equal to the atmospheric pressure 760 millimeter of mercury. But the pleural cavity pressure, pressure between the brighter pleura and visceral pleura is 756 millimeter of mercury. 4 millimeter of mercury difference. This 4 millimeter mercury difference, it is this pressure that keeps the lung expanding even if you are not breathing. There is no breathing. But the lung, they remain expanded because of this pressure difference. The pressure, low pressure in the pleural cavity, 756, 4 millimeter difference. That keeps lungs expanded, not allowing them to uh, require. Now what happens is that the, when uh, this pressure is a negative pressure um, the pressure within the pleural cavity uh, due to visceral pleura adhering to the parietal pleura is always negative respect of atmospheric pressure and this pressure uh, uh, within the alveoli and the lungs the atmospheric pressure intrapulmonary pressure this opposes the elastic recoil of the lungs, keeps the lung attached to the thoracic wall and diaphragm at least partially inflated, not collapsed at all times even after exhalation. And what we understand that actually when the chest wall muscle, the rib muscles and diaphragm, they contract and increases the thoracic cavity volume both anteroposteriorly transverse and vertically they actually decreases further the pressure in the pleural cavity which was minus 4 you can say increases up to minus 6 and this minus 6 pressure causes further expansion of the lung tissue. So creating a sucking air from the trachea bronchi bronchioles into the alveoli because when it will uh, this negative pressure minus 6 
will uh, uh, will cause a negative pressure and it will cause further expansion of the lungs that will create another pressure same pressure is reflected in the alveoli decrease in the pressure that will cause a suction effect so basically it is the difference in the uh, pressure in the pleural cavity from minus 4 to minus 6 that causes inflation of the lungs and this pressure negative pressure is, is created by the movement of the chest wall by the rib muscles and the diaphragm if we have this concept in mind then now we can understand the movements of the chest wall and move, uh, respiratory movements that in the first diagram here is shown that a rib is attached to the sternum and is posterior end through the head to the vertebra so this rib is sternovertebral rib so what is happening here is that the sternal is moving a little bit because we know that manubriosternal joint is secondary cartilaginous joint and small movement can occur here up to 7 degree movement can occur here so it's causing the body to move forward and when it moves forward by contraction of the rib muscles it acts like the handle of the pump and the rib is the fulcrum of this handle when it moves it this you consider this sternum as a hand and this is the fulcrum of the pump and when this uh, this uh, move forward it causes is increase in the anteroposterior diameter so this movement is occurring at the uh, pump handle movement is occurring at the vertebrosternal ribs where the anteroposterior diameter is changing. In the second diagram, we are seeing that the one part of the rib is attached to the vertebra behind, but the anteriorly it is attached only to the Inter, uh, with the control, control joints of the above rib yeah, means that low ribs so when that moves here you see it is moving like the handle of a bucket from below upward when it moves up because it is in oblique moves up it causes in the difference in the diameter of the transverse diameter of the chest wall so these movement because they are occurring at the uh, vertebral control ribs vertebral control ribs so lower ribs and this is buckle handle movement and this is causing increase in the transverse diameter of the lungs here is in this diagram also shown the air is shown the anteroposterior diameter changes uh, of the uh, chest wall and air is shown the transverse diameter of the air both at the same because both movement are occurring at the same time air is shown the both movements of the chest wall buckle handle and pump handle movement. the third movement is the diaphragm diaphragm and contracts it moves downward when it moves downward it causes in the expansion of the vertical diameter of the chest cavity pleural cavity vertical diameter it increases so you can see here this much difference is here so the movement of the diaphragm during the respiratory movement causes difference in the when it contracts it contracts it increases the vertical diameter of the chest wall so what we have understood is that through the pump handle movement 
is the anteroposterior diameter which is changing and it is occurring mostly at the vertebral sternal ribs mostly and here we see that the transverse diameter it is increased by the buccal handle movement and it is occurring mostly at the vertebro chondral ribs so pump handle movement elevation of the ribs increase anteroposterior diameter of the thoracic cavity here is shown buccal handle movement elevation of the ribs increase in lateral diameter of the thoracic cavity means transverse diameter of the ribs and we have seen that it is occurring mostly this mostly mostly although there is an above ribs also there is uh, increase the transverse diameter but mostly this is occurring at the vertebral sternal ribs and this movement buccal handle movement is occurring at the vertebral chondral ribs and we have seen in the previous slide that the uh, vertical diameter is increased by the contraction of the diaphragm so movement of the rib cage during the inspiration has been shown here and here is shown that the movement of the diaphragm so this causes further decrease in the intrapleural inter, intra pleural pressure means pressure in the pleural cavity from minus 4 to minus 6 which causes further expansion of the lungs mind it again keep it in mind that lungs they are kept expanded by the negative pressure in the intra pleural cavity of minus 4 millimeter of mercury Okay, so here is the pump handle movement shown again to show you that increase in the anteroposterior diameter of the chest wall. Movement of the diaphragm is called contraction descent diaphragm, increase in vertical diameter of the thoracic cavity, relaxation of the diaphragm is the expiration. So it's the relaxation of the diaphragm, it's not the uh, so means uh, what uh, you can say is that inhalation inspiration is a active process while expiration is the uh, uh, Passive process is the elastic recoility of the lungs which tend to recoil back and But they are kept open by the minus 4 pressure normal pressure in the intrapleural cavity this is normal respiration in the spine position. You see, normal respiration. Here is the normal expiration. Inwards movement of the abdomen during inspiration. Abdominal paradox. You can understand very well that when inspiration will occur, diaphragm will move down so it will cause an increase in the pressure in the abdomen and abdomen will also expand the abdominal wall will protrude out this is the normal one and during the uh, normal expiration both things at the uh, uh, because it relaxes goes back to the diaphragm normal position so the abdomen comes back Okay, but in the abdominal paradox, what is occurring that during inspiration, although the uh, diaphragm should move down and cause the expansion of the uh, abdomen or the protrusion of the abdominal wall, the abdominal wall is moving inside. This is called as abdominal paradox. That is reverse movement of the abdomen as compared to inspiration and expiration so when there is a rib cage breathing that's the thoracic breathing breathing the abdomen is not uh, seems to be moving at all so only the chest wall is moving but when we see abdominal moving movement where you may have seen some persons lying down and their abdomen is moving outward and inward during inspiration and their chest seems to be moving 
uh, not at all otherwise the uh, in the normal persons this movement will occur during inspiration and expiration so two kind of movements that is thoracic and abdominal this is abdominal thoracic this is abdominal this this movement is mainly thoracic and this movement is mainly abdominal and this is abdominal paradox this difference you may feel uh, in the females inward movement of the abdomen during inspiration rather than normal outward is called as abdominal paradox the etiology ineffective or ineffective breathing pattern no specific indicator of severe pulmonary distress or severe respiratory distress the females normally there is the uh, thoracic respiration mostly now we have understood about the movement of the chest wall and mechanism of the movement of the chest wall and why this is the how many diameters or they are changing what is causing changing in the diameters and pressure changes now are the muscles of the respiration there are accessory muscles of respiration means they are not attached the axio appendicular muscles the muscles which are attached to the chest wall and the upper limb primarily they are primarily the muscles of the upper limb but several of them such as uh, pec major pec minor serratus anterior they may act as the accessory muscles of respiration helping elevate the rib cage to expand the thoracic cavity when in the inspiration in deep forceful uh, inspiration uh, here is example given 100 meter dash race so you may have observed it yourself when you run when you are playing and you come breathless uh, uh, then you put your hand over your knees uh, put your hand over some uh, thing over the bench or over the chair and breathe deeply trying to inhale the air forcefully and during that process actually you are using the fixing the limbs with that object over the knees or over the table or over the chair your hands and your upper limb is fixed now when the muscles such as pec major serratus anterior pec minor they will act they will actually cause the expansion of the chest rather than movement of the limb because the you have fixed your limbs over your knees or over something that you are holding with your hand forcibly similarly the scapular muscles of the neck we descend from the vertebra to the neck first and second are primarily on the vertebral column they mainly act on the vertebral column but <coughs> however they act as accessory muscles by fixing these ribs and enabling the muscles connecting the ribs below to move effectively in elevating the lower ribs during forced inspiration so it means that first rib and second rib they are actually fixed by the scalenis muscle which are muscles of the neck actually and they are more their actual action is over the neck but when you uh, need forceful inspiration and you may have observed also uh, in that uh, when you are inhaling forcibly your neck muscles they are also contracted you can feel them so it is actually to fix the first and second rib so that the lower ribs they can move effectively these are the actions of the accessory muscles and these muscles their origin insertion their nerve supply action on the limbs you have studied in the upper limb also so here is shown the accessory muscles of respiration here are the scalenis muscle of, uh, of the neck pec major 
is pec minor and serratus anterior muscle. They are shown here. And again, with that is the abdominal muscles also, the external oblique and rectus abdominis. They are also attached to the lower ribs. So they are maybe, they may be named as accessory muscles of the respiration. Also a hair muscle shown subclavius which originates from the lower uh, inferior surface of the uh, subclavian groove of the clavicle to the uh, first rib. So the accessory muscles, serratus posterior superior, serratus posterior inferior on the back, the vital costrum, transfer thoracis. These muscles are concerned with the ribs and uh, the innermost, then the subcostal and then the uh, transfer. These are the muscles of the respiration, actually muscles of the respiration and here are shown their attachment, superior, inferior, innervation and main action. Now in the further uh, lectures we will see the attachment of the uh, intercostal muscles and their actions, how they act and then we will see the diaphragm also in the next lecture. Till then, Allah Hafiz.